Hi everybody and welcome. Today we're going to look at how to effectively use images in Canvas. We're going to discuss various things such as where do you find good images and then once you have an image what's the difference between uploading and embedding an image when you want to put it into Canvas and where exactly can I put it in Canvas. I'm also going to briefly discuss the difference between a JPEG image and a PNG image or a GIF and does it really matter which one you use? Sometimes it doesn't, and sometimes it does. And finally, I'll show you a few formatting tricks on how to float the image on the screen, how to put margins, how to make it look nice with the other Canvas content that you have. So here's a Canvas page that I have. It already has a little bit of content on it, as well as it has some pictures. And so we're just going to look at, maybe I want to take it to the next step, add some more pictures. So first I'm going to edit the page. And for right now, we're just going to stick to this rich content editor view. We'll dive into HTML a little bit later, but right now I'll work with this interface. So first and foremost, if you have a picture on your computer already and you want to upload that picture into Canvas, that's just fine. You go ahead and click on the upload picture icon, or you can go insert image and upload an image. And here you can drag and drop the image onto the page here, or you can click on this and search for the image on your computer. You'll notice one of the newer features with Canvas is you have the ability to search the Unsplash repository. And Unsplash is one of my favorite resources when building Canvas content. It's a repository of very high quality images. Now in education, it doesn't always have exactly what we want, but it does have a good library. In fact, if I were to search for library, then you can see all of the options. And some of these books I've even used in my courses. I can also search for terms like school or students, or even campus. If you have a picture that you like, you can select it and submit that. And easy enough, it'll embed right into your course. I don't even know what campus this is, but if I were to guess, I would say Brigham Young University. If you happen to know, or if this is your school, then leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Now this image is a little bit large for my content. If you want to, you can shrink it down like this and you also can access the image options by clicking on that and you can put a custom width. Generally speaking, I don't know why, but I'd like to have my pictures about 300 pixels wide. Here's where you can also put in the alt text. Unsplash automatically gives you alt text, but you can change that to something else if you want or you can mark it as decorative. And then you'd click done. Now you notice that the text comes right up against the picture and then there's a lot of space above and below that text until you get to the next line. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later on. For now, if you want, you can just have a hard return and you can have pictures with no inline text. So that looks nice, but let's look at some other options. Now, in addition to browsing the Unsplash library using the upload image feature, you can also go to the Unsplash website, which is unsplash.com. And their website is actually a lot of fun to browse. Here you can search entire categories, and what I like about this is if I search for students, for example, and I click on one that I like, but I don't want to use this image, but I do like this image, then you can see related photos right below that. And there you might find one that you like, or you can keep searching. It becomes kind of a rabbit hole. So here's another picture, and then eventually you'll search for something that you like, and you might stumble upon this one. Now in Unsplash, I have a couple of options. If I wanted to put this picture into my course, I can download it and all of the pictures on Unsplash are free. They're Creative Commons. So I can download that to my computer and I can upload it into Canvas. Another option would be if I right click on a PC or do the Mac equivalent, I can copy the image address. Now I don't want to copy the image and I'm not really looking to save it. I'm copying the image address. That's the www dot wherever the image lives. So I'm going to copy that and return to my Canvas course. And here when I upload images, instead of uploading from the computer or Unsplash, I'm just going to say I have a URL and this is the picture that I want. And then you can insert it that way. And of course you can adjust it if you would like. Now this works not only for Unsplash but other photo sites as well. Here's an image that I have on imager.com. And this is an animated image. It's not a movie. It's not an mp4 or anything. It's an actual picture but it's a moving picture. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that image and we're going to paste that in there. Now I can't paste it into Canvas itself or else it'll have a hyperlink and that'll take me to the image, but what I want to do is embed the image. And the easiest way to do that is to click on this again and add the URL and submit. And here I can resize it if I want. 
Let's find another one. Here's an image. I'm going to copy this image address and I'll paste this right below. So again, I'm going to go and embed the image. I'm going to put the URL and submit it. And then I'll just click on image options. I'm going to mark this as decorative and I'll put that as about 300 pixels wide. And there we go. There's a couple of images. There are pros and cons to embedding the image. For one, you don't have to download it to your computer. It actually lives on another server, somebody else's computer, and you're just calling it onto your Canvas page. And it doesn't take up any file space if that's an issue. So we looked at Unsplash. Let me show you a couple of other resources that you can use too. This one is called Pexels, and this is an alternative to Unsplash. And there's a lot of overlap too. You're going to see a lot of the same pictures on various sites here. But if you want to get artistic, if you want to just get a different idea, here I'll type school. And you can see a little bit of variety, a little bit different than what we saw on Unsplash. If I were to also search for perhaps students, then you can see just a few more options. All of these are free. All of these are high quality and they're high resolution. The final site I'll show you is called Pixabay. And it's very similar to the other platforms that we looked at. Like this one also has some videos that you can search. These are 4K, which I think doesn't really mean much when we're talking about Canvas. We're not going to be looking for high 4K resolution things. You kind of want it to be at least maybe HD, but even SD is okay. And so if you wanted to dress up your course with some little videos, then this would be a good place to find those. So now we're back in Canvas and we've talked about where you can find some good images. There are plenty of libraries that are fantastic for that. And also how do you put them into Canvas? You can either upload them or you can embed them into Canvas. Either way has its pros and cons. Let me go ahead and delete those. Now let me talk briefly about the difference between a JPEG, a PNG, and a GIF. So you'll have access to this actual Canvas course in the description below if you want to browse the actual content that I have, which I do have a write-up about some of the fundamentals, including a branching scenario chart that talks about the difference between PNG, JPEG, GIF, and an SVG file. But very briefly, what I want to say is if you have a photograph and you're worried about it being too large that you want to compress it, then you'll be wanting to go with a JPEG. You want to save that as a JPEG and upload it. PNG and GIF are different in that they support transparency. JPEG does not, and I'm going to show you what that means in just one moment. Um, PNG tends to be the highest quality, but also they tend to also be larger images because they're not compressed. JPEG compresses the image, and when it does that, you lose a little bit of quality. But for the most part in Canvas, that probably doesn't matter too much. So a lot of times you'll be fine if you use JPEG or PNG. Now, if you have a picture that's animated, that will be a, a GIF. And in another video, I'm going to show you how to create GIFs to use in Canvas. They're very useful. So let me hop back over to my PowerPoint presentation that I showed you at the very beginning. That's how I do my thumbnails for my YouTube videos. I just create them right in PowerPoint. Now here's my slide. I'm going to zoom out a little bit because I have two images that I'm going to put on the slide. One's a PNG and one's a JPEG. On the left here is my PNG. And this is distinct because you can see that the background is transparent. So what I did, I went into Photoshop and I outlined myself and then I put a little bit of border around myself but I didn't want the rest of it to be filled in with white. I just wanted to kind of be floating there. And that's how you get my effect that I have on my thumbnails. So I'll just usually put it off to the side a little bit. Now I saved that same image with the outline as a JPEG. And you can see that the JPEG, it just fills in all of the content, fills it with white. And so what I'm left with is a box. Now this is also a box, but you can see that part of the box is transparent. The background is transparent and only the part that I want is filled in, whereas the JPEG, everything is filled in. And so in my case, I don't want to have the JPEG. I want to have the PNG because I don't want to have a box in front of everything. And that way I can move it around. And you'll notice the logo also is a PNG because by default, all of the images are rectangles. Some of them are squares, but you know, every square is also a rectangle. If this was a JPEG, then I would have my red logo, but I would also have everything else filled in white. There would be no background. And this one, I can bring it about and th so the background is transparent. So sometimes you want an animated picture. Here's an example of a GIF. I'll just put this off to the side, maybe blow it up a little bit. And this is a GIF that I created for one of the other videos that I produced last month where I wanted to show you an interaction with a custom table. 
And so this picture is looped, meaning it'll play from the beginning to the end. When it gets to the end, it'll start from the beginning and play again. So it just cycles in a loop and it repeats forever. So here on this page, we have three different examples of types of pictures. We have a PNG with a transparent background. It's also going to be very high quality, but for something this small, it doesn't really matter. Here's a JPEG, which this would be great. In fact, the background image of this slide is a JPEG. Because it doesn't move, I don't need a transparency, and I want to compress it because I don't want that taking up a whole bunch of file size. And so I have a JPEG, here's a PNG, here's another PNG, and then I could put a GIF on there as well, something animated. Now the last thing I'll show you as we compare JPEG to PNG is an image that I have on this course right here. This is what a JPEG would look like, some cherries with a drop shadow. If I were to put it on a screen that has a gradient, meaning it's dark at the bottom, light on the top, this is a gradient, and the JPEG overlaid has this big clunky border. Yes, it does have the elements, the cherries, it does have a drop shadow, but it also has a white background. Whereas the PNG has the same cherries, the same drop shadow, and the background is all transparent, and so it looks good on a gradient. Now for the last part that I want to show you in this video is we're gonna jump into the HTML editor and we're going to explore some various formatting options. Once you have your image on the page, what are the ways that you can style it? So let me come up here to the JPEG portion, and I'm just going to insert a course image. Let's find something that I've used before. I've used this baby panda a few times. All right, so immediately I'm noticing a few things. For one, the image is right up against the edge to the left there, and maybe that's okay, but do you want to put some spacing between the edge and the picture? And also you'll notice the text runs right up against the picture. And so what are some ways that we can address that? Now the simple thing I can do is just hit enter, hit a hard return and force everything down here. So essentially this picture is sitting on one line and the text is on another line. However, maybe I don't want a whole canvas page that is only picture and then text and then picture and then text. Maybe I want the text to run up against the side of the picture. So how do we do that? What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to write some code, just a simple line of code that's going to put this image and it's going to float it to the side of the text right there. So I'm going to find the code. It's in the JPEG section. So here's my image. I have image. You can ignore the ID. That's just something Canvas uses. Here's the source. I uploaded it to, into Canvas. And so that's the file where it is. Here's the alt. In fact, I'm going to change that to just um, just baby panda. It doesn't need to be baby panda.jpg. Now here's the line of code that I'm going to write. I'm going to put style equals and I'm going to have it float colon and I want it to float on the left. And so that's it. That's the style. That's what we're going to look at for right now. So it's saying I want this image to float to the left. So squeeze everything around it and let's see what that looks like. There it is. So, so now you can see that the text doesn't rest on one single line and then it returns to the next line. It runs up right against the picture. Now the thing that kind of stinks is that the text is right up, like exactly touching the picture. And maybe I want a little bit of space because that looks bad. That's actually really hard to read, especially those characters that are right up against the picture. So let's put a little bit of margin. And it's simple. Let me show you how to do that. We're going to get into the HTML editor. I have my style here. I'm going to add to the style. So for one, I want it to float to the left. I can also float it to the right, and we'll look at that in a second. Now, if I wanted to put a margin all around the picture, so I don't want anything from the top, bottom, left, right to be within a certain pixels, like 20 pixels, then I could just write margin, and I'm going to put 20 pixels. And that'll put some buffer around the entire picture. Now that's not what I want, but let's just go ahead and save that and see what it looks like. Okay, so now you can see instead of flushing right up against the left, it's 20 pixels from the left side. It has 20 pixels between the text and the right, and also up, down, it's 20 pixels. So maybe that works, but that's not exactly what I want. Instead, what I want is I just want to put margins on the right. I don't want it to be on the left, top, or the bottom. So you can specify margin right. Now, if you wanted it on the left and the right, but not the top and the bottom, then you could either write uh, margin left, and I'll put 20 pixels there. Or alternatively, you could put margin, I'm going to put a zero for top and bottom, and I'm going to put 20 pixels. That means zero top and bottom, 20 pixels left and right. Otherwise, I could say 
10 pixels top and bottom and zero pixels left and right. This would be 10 pixels top and bottom, 20 pixels left and right. So if the left and right are the same, then you can write it this way. But I'm gonna stick with this code right here. All right, so I have margin right, 20 pixels. I'm gonna take out the margin left. I just want it on the right. I just want a little bit of buffer between the picture and the text. And there we go. I kind of like it flush right there. And I like it um, with no space at the top either. But now that I'm looking at it, maybe I do want a few pixels separating the bottom of the picture from the rest of this text. So let's go, go in here one last time. I have margins on the right, and now let's put some margins on the bottom. 20 pixels maybe is too much. Just for the sake of this example, I'm gonna put 10 pixels on the bottom there. And I think that's fine. So have a picture. The code that I'm specifying is that I want the picture to float on the left, and I want there to be some margin between the side of the picture and the text, and also a little bit of margin on the bottom there. So that's swell, but sometimes I want the picture to float to the right too. It's actually a feature that I use quite a lot in Canvas. I like having the images float to the right and having the text on the left. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change that. So now it's gonna float on the right. The words are gonna come up on the left-hand side. I no longer need this right margin, but I'm gonna need some padding on the left. And by padding, I mean margin, not exactly padding. And I'll just go ahead and delete that margin bottom. So I'll go ahead and save it. And there you can see the images floating on the right. Let me say a quick thing about GIFs. Now, one of the first GIFs, the most famous, is this dancing baby right here. But I like to create GIFs so that I can show instructional things, such as if I'm having my students embed content into a discussion post, then I'll show them how to do that with my mouse clicks. So what we've been working on in this Canvas course is a page. This is just the content page. But know that anytime you have the rich content editor or the HTML editor, you have the ability to upload or embed images. So that could be an announcement. It could be a regular Canvas page or an assignment. It could be a discussion, or you can embed images into discussion posts, or you can even use imagery in quizzes and quiz questions. That's one of the fantastic things about Canvas is that you always have access to this HTML editor and you always have access to this upload image menu. And so this is how you can effectively use images in Canvas. And if you like this content, then I highly encourage you to subscribe to our channel to receive more tips and tricks about creating amazing content in Canvas. Click the icon to get notifications of new content and also visit us on our website, howtocanvas.com, and you can find us on social media as well. The link to the Canvas page that I was working on will be on all of these resources as well, so look for that. As always, I appreciate you being with me, and happy teaching and learning.